This week in Blender, I made this vintage retro phone. That's one of those old school rotary telephones. And I turned it into a game asset so that it can be used in the game House Flipper. In this video, you'll see how I made this 3D model in Blender and using House Flipper's workshop exporter tool in Unity. So I got the idea for this 3D model while browsing the House Flipper Discord. I'm a little bit obsessed with House Flipper, and if you don't know what that is, it's a first person video game where you can renovate and flip houses. So there's a lot of cleaning and painting and rearranging the floor plan and then decorating your house via the catalog in the game. And you can also upload custom assets to the Steam Workshop and browse other people's assets to get not only the assets that come with the game, but also all of the furniture items that other people have uploaded to the Steam Workshop. Sometimes I browse the House Slipper Discord where people post workshop requests for items that they'd like to see in the game just to get some ideas to make some assets that people might actually use. And on this particular day, I saw this request where someone had asked for an old school 1950s slash 1960s rotary phone that can be used on a desk. They also mentioned that the ones in the game were too antique looking for what they were going for and they were specifically looking for a retro phone in black. And I saw that no one had fulfilled their requests yet, so I checked the Steam Workshop to see what was already there and what was missing. And it looks like there's some of those antique phones and then a lot of phones that look to me like 1980s and later, the kind of home phones that I remember seeing growing up before cell phones took over. So there really was kind of a gap for retro style phones from like the 1950s and 60s, at least for my simple search. So I figured I could attempt to make this item. Some reference pictures were posted in Discord for what the user was looking for specifically, but I went to Pinterest to get some different angles and inspiration pictures for the 1950s slash 1960s rotary phones. I decided that I would make this phone in a few different swatches, one of them being the black color that the user had asked for originally. And then I also decided to make two more swatches, one which would be an avocado green, which was pretty common during this time period, as well as a blush pink color. Then I set up my blender project and began modeling, starting with the base since that was the largest object. So I started by scaling a cube down to size, the approximate size based on the dimensions I found in a reference image. And then I used the bevel and subdivision modifiers to smooth it out and started changing the edges to create this kind of rounded trapezoid shape. Next, I created another cube to start making the holders, the part of the phone base that actually holds the phone that you speak into. And to do this, I decided to use just the subdivision modifier and hitting shift E to sharpen some of the edges to create the shape that I wanted so that I could have it be round in some areas and then sharper in other areas. Then around the holders, I wanted to cut out a section of the base for where the phone will actually sit nestled into the base. So to do this, I created a cube and use the boolean modifier on the base to cut out wherever that cube intersected the base. Then I moved on to modeling the part of the phone that you pick up and actually speak into the receiver, starting with a cylinder and extruding it upwards and then extruding out a part of it to actually be the handle. And I used the mirror modifier, so I only had to model one side of the receiver. And while I was making the receiver, I was keeping in mind the fact that this would become a game asset. So it was important that throughout this whole process that I keep in mind the poly count and keeping in mind that I wasn't going to have my subdivision modifiers jacked all the way up and trying to keep things as minimal as possible while still getting the look that I wanted. Next, I wanted to create the dialing mechanism. So I started with a cylinder and then duplicated it and shrank it down to the size of each of the little holes that you stick your fingers in and then use the array modifier to array it around to create the various holes that you'll need to dial the numbers and if anyone is totally not sure how one of these phones is used i've got you basically each of these circles will have a number inside of them one through nine and then also zero and there's also a 
I was going to say a hashtag. Oh my God. There's also the pound key, which looks like a hashtag and the star symbol. And you could use star and then a couple numbers to like call someone back who just called you and some other functions like that. So what you would do is you'd stick your finger in the little slot and you would spin the dial all the way around to this little metal piece that I'll be making in a moment and then let go and the phone would click back into place and that was a way that you were able to dial in a single number and so you would dial each number that way. I never actually had one of these phones or used one of these phones. Um, I was always used to the 1990s home phone. We had cord phones when I was younger until way later we had the wireless cordless phones but I definitely had cord phones growing up. Comment down below what was the oldest phone you had in your household and are you feeling really old like I am right now? <laughs> I also added an outer ring for the dialer and here I am creating the little metal indicator I mentioned earlier and attaching it to the phone. The last thing I'll be modeling is the cord. And in these older phone models, they have a spiral cord that would always get caught on itself. To make the shape of the cord, I added a curved path and then moved the vertices around to get the shape that I wanted. And then to get the spiral geometry, I added a single vertex, extruded it out, and then used the screw modifier to spiral it around into a cylindrical shape. Then I used the curve modifier on the spiral shape and curved it around that path we just created. So at this point, I'm done creating the models and I'm ready to start making these models game ready or having a low poly version of these models. So I'm going to duplicate my collection to have a second collection that will be my low poly meshes just because I'm going to be applying modifiers and doing some destructive workflow. And I wanna keep my high poly version so that if I ever need to go back, I have them as a backup and I'll still have the modifiers active so I can make any edits if I need to. So for each of the low poly objects here, I'm just going through and checking my subdivision subsurface modifiers to see if I can get away with less number of subdivisions. Basically the subdivision subsurface modifier creates a bunch of subdivisions or loop cuts or extra geometry on the mesh and it's what makes everything look quite smooth but that is at a cost of extra geometry so i'm basically looking at the models to see how few of subdivisions can i get away with in order to keep the general shape i'm going for but not at the cost of an excessive amount of geometry that i'm going to have to remove or clean up later and the goal is to have as low poly as possible within reason just to make the game asset more optimized for gameplay and then from there i'm applying all of the modifiers and editing each object to delete any extra geometry that's unnecessary things like extra vertices merging vertices together that are really close and could essentially be combined as one vertex deleting faces that the player won't even be able to see like underneath the base or underneath the receiver since this is a static object in the game, dissolving extra edges or edge sliding them and merging them together where there are extra edges that aren't actually creating visible geometry. Next I'm ready to apply some textures so I check the face orientation of the model to make sure all my faces are facing the correct direction for when I apply textures to them and then I am going to UV unwrap them and for this project the textures are pretty simple so I'm just using Smart UV Project to make this process pretty automatic. And then I'm going to go into a, an external program to create a texture. Texture atlases are pretty great because you're essentially telling the game engine that you just have one texture to load and it has a bunch of different swatches on it or texture areas on it that you assign to the different parts of your model. I created a green swatch and then a darker green swatch next to it that I'm going to assign to most of the pieces of the phone. And then I'm also using a larger part of this texture to actually draw on or later type on the numbers and pound sign and star that go on the actual dialer. So I had my tablet sitting next to me and I just figured I could just texture paint the numbers exactly where I want them and then go back into my editing program and just type over the numbers I created and have the numbers all positioned pretty easily. I created two other separate materials, one of them being metallic for the metal indicator and one of them being a transparent plastic looking piece for the dialer plate. And while I was here, I went ahead and created two other textures for the pink phone as well as the black phone and duplicated my phone to have three separate models and assigned the pink and black textures to them. 
So at this point, I was ready to export my assets as FBX files and bring them into the House Flipper Workshop Exporter project in Unity. House Flipper has a tutorial video that tells you which version of Unity you need to install and how to use their workshop exporter tool to upload your item to the Steam Workshop. While I was in the Unity project, I created new materials in Unity with metallic properties and clear plastic looking properties and assigned them to my model to override the slot that I had created in Blender. And this was so that those materials will show up properly in games. I also added a box collider and uploaded my own custom thumbnail, named my asset for the Steam Workshop, and also set item categories for where the item will show up in the in-game catalog. And then I hit submit. They now show up on the Steam Workshop. I subscribed to them and tried them out in game. You can place them on desktops, tabletops, kitchen counters, really anywhere. And also they can be placed on top of objects like maybe a stack of books or anything else you wanna place them on. You can find these assets under my Steam Workshop. I will leave a link in the video description in case you want to check them out or any of my other workshop items I've created in the past for House Flipper. With the project completed, I sent a message in the House Flipper Discord to the person who originally requested this item, and I hope the black swatch will be suitable for what they're looking for for their game. They responded the next day and said they liked the asset, so I hope they end up enjoying them, and I hope you end up enjoying them too if you end up downloading them. I also want to give a shout out to Polygon Runway's videos. I absolutely love his content and halfway through the project I ended up looking to see if there were any videos on YouTube for how to make a phone. Especially the dialer part, just trying to see what other people do when they approach this project. He actually has a step-by-step -step video for how to make a similar phone in a more low-poly style. Also, he has a video for how to make the spiral phone cord. So if you're needing a step-by-step -step tutorial for either of those things, I will link those videos in the description. That's everything, so thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.